What's the best thing about our new album? That I'm done making it. Because <laughs> that shit wasn't easy. Creating the sixth Queens of the Stone Age record would be anything but easy. Following 2007's Era Vulgaris, mastermind Josh Homme would take a six year break from the band, producing the Arctic Monkeys' third record. playing in other bands like Eagles of Death Metal and Them Crooked Vultures, while also welcoming his second child. But in the fall of 2010, after developing an antibiotic-resistant staph infection, Hami was hospitalized for nearly two weeks, then bedridden for a handful of months, leaving the frontman to sink into a deep depression. The singer and guitarist would later tell journalists that his heart had actually stopped during the surgery meant to rid his infection, and that even after he was revived, he felt like a part of him had been left behind on the operating table. Lost and out of love with music, the turbulent process of assembling like clockwork would lead to quite possibly their best record yet, helping redefine the band's signature style while documenting Hami's personal journey of moving forward. Let's explore the tragedy behind Like Clockwork. Following the star-studded concept record Songs for the Deaf, you can't even hear it. the band's lineup would shift yet again. Dave Grohl would head back to front the Foo Fighters, Mark Lanigan would only return as a guest collaborator, and longtime bassist Nick Oliveri would be fired from the band after falling out. This decision to cut his longtime friend loose left Tommy considering ending Queens of the Stone Age for good. But the band lived on. Lullabies to Paralyze saw new recruits Troy Van Leeuwen and Joey Castillo fill the voids left by previous members. But then came the rather uninspired era of Algaris, which would slightly tarnish the band's reputation as one of the most consistent rock acts of modern day. Not a bad record, just one that failed to live up to their previous highs. After the ensuing tour, the group took a break to focus on individual projects but it's a break that would unintentionally turn into a six-year gap between records. Starring in supergroups, producing for English rockers, all while being a father, eventually began to take its toll on Hami. After years of trying to juggle multiple projects, he just couldn't get it all done. He eventually developed an MRSA infection that worsened from working non-stop and getting in too deep with drugs. While in surgery to treat the infection, doctors found an issue with his oxygen tube and had to revive Hami by defibrillator. These complications left him sick in bed for months with no drive or desire to make a record. In fact, a new album was the last thing on his mind. Hami was falling out of love with music, while the remaining members of Queens were getting eager to get back into studio. Hami's bandmates would eventually encourage him to begin work on a sixth studio album as a way out of his darkness. The frontman began by calling up Trent Reznor of Nine Inch Nails to have him in the producer chair, but the opportunity to record with one another continually passed them by. So, Queens of the Stone Age would go on to self-produce the record, experiencing a few false starts and stops until finally beginning to record Like Clockwork in August of 2012. The album would open with the sound of glass breaking, which typically represents the idea of evil departing and good luck on the horizon. Keep your eyes peeled, set a dark and moodier tone, while previewing Hami's distorted negative mentality at the time of its recording. Being their first record in nearly six years, Queens wanted to reinvent both their band and sound, but personal and musical difficulties would contribute to some drama during the recording of the record. Homies failed to ever go into specifics over their issues, but there were differences that were definitely forcing the band apart. In searching for inspiration, the group would reissue their self-titled debut record, eventually embarking on a tour and playing the album in full each night. Those subsequent rehearsals wound up defining like clockwork. Originally, the new album was a kind of bluesy James Brown record, and now it was turning into a trancy, broken thing. More keys and grainy synths would join the mix, but the album would also give us some of the band's most introspective and confessional moments. Hami felt extremely lost and unsure of where his life was headed leaving him searching for guidance. Who am I supposed to be? Not exactly sure anymore. 
Something like the infectious My God is the Sun even expresses his thoughts about the insignificance of his humanity in relation to the universe. <laughs> Those dark themes of depression and melancholy bleed into the psychedelic epic I Appear Missing, helping us further empathize with his hospitalization and the deterioration of his mental state. Progress finally began faring well, but the group's inner conflicts continued to brew. In November 2012, longtime drummer Joey Castillo would be reluctantly relieved by Hami for reasons still unknown. The band would have these great victories, and then something would go south for a bit. This inability for anything to go like clockwork would become the inspiration for the album's title. Their ups and downs had become the norm, and turning it into an inside joke allowed them to persevere. They had just lost their drummer about a third of the way into recording. But like clockwork, legendary musician Dave Grohl was available to record the remainder of tracks. From there on out, things would be a bit more smooth sailing. The album's dance number again makes reference to Hami's near-death experience. But since then, he'd realized the value of life and the irony that he was given a second chance. Now, he plans to live it to the fullest, taking risks, dancing, and having a good time. I'm risking it always, no second chance is gonna be... Hearing that the Songs for the Deaf drummer would be returning for an album caught the attention of Songs for the Deaf bassist Nick Oliveri. The former member would request to play on the LP, but Hami ultimately chose to stick with current bassist Michael Schumann, although Oliveri was offered the chance to provide backing vocals on the guest loaded If I Had a Tail. <laughs> Queens of the Stone Age have always been known to boast an array of guests and lineup changes with each album, and like Clockwork, was no different. These guest appearances were welcomed interruptions. Having this wide assortment of guests and moods would appear to create a disaster, but instead, all of these personalities are placed in the background, letting the songs shine and the moods naturally flow from one song to the next. Fairweather Friends is the uplifting and cinematic star-studded track featuring Elton John on piano. A fair-weathered friend is typically defined as someone who is your friend only when things are going well for you. Hami has said that the track is about his friend's reaction to his depression and getting back into music following his botched surgery, with some of them sticking by him while those fair-weathered friends, well, I don't give a shit about them anyhow. their studio visitors would distract them from how awful things were going. And if anything, they gave the group hope to keep pressing on. The track Colopsia features some tender balladry co-written by Alex Turner, and it sees Hami finally escaping those dark days. The album's closer is likely the band's least sounding Queens of the Stone Age song ever, but it feels appropriate given Hami's growth since beginning this record. The beautiful piano-led ballad shares heartfelt lyrics about regrets in life, living your truth, and learning to let go. Not everything that goes around comes back around, you know. Like Clockwork would be the group's most critically acclaimed record since Songs for the Deaf. It was nominated for three Grammy Awards, including Best Rock Album, and it debuted at number one on the Billboard 200, the band's first album to top the chart. Following his close encounter with death, Hami couldn't shake the experience from his mind, and as a result, it comes out on this LP. The album wasn't just a simple return to roots. It was a crisp update that expanded on the robot rock aesthetic of 2005's Lullabies to Paralyze. It remains their most focused release, featuring some of the band's utmost personal and vulnerable songwriting. But most importantly, the album documented Hami's journey of moving forward and finding a way out of the darkness that consumed him, making Like Clockwork the perfect example of finding treasure in tragedy. Hami had found his way out of the darkness, and making like clockwork offered him a chance to see the light again. If you want to see more of the light on Earth, check out David Attenborough's award-winning Light on Earth, streaming now at curiositystream.com forward slash middle eight. The film dives into the mystery of bioluminescence and the truth behind these animals that produce their own light. Whatever excites your curiosity can be found at CuriosityStream. Nature, dinosaurs, space, food, history, the future, 
and so much more can be streamed for just under $15 a year. And the great thing about CuriosityStream is that it's not just these documentaries that you get access to when you sign up. You also get free access to Nebula, which is the independent streaming platform that me and a bunch of other creators are currently working on. I'm developing a new music series called Offbeat that arrives on the platform later in September. For middle eight viewers, a Curiosity Stream subscription is less than $1.50 a month. So this bundle of Curiosity Stream in Nebula is one of the best deals in streaming right now. If it sounds like something for you, head over to curiositystream.com forward slash middle eight and start streaming some of the internet's best documentaries and creator content. Thanks for watching, ladies and gents. If you liked it, give the video a like rating, subscribe, and share it with a music nerd. Support us on Patreon if you could be so kind, and if you're looking for some new music, be sure to listen to my bi-weekly podcast, Playmate, where I interview artists and we chat music. It's all in the box below. Again, thanks for watching, and keep listening to Queens of the Stone Age.